So when we left off last, I'm going to keep talking while I grab my timer here. I was uh, at a group home, but this story overlaps with the time period of my first marriage, which I already discussed, but... Oh, that two years was interesting. It felt good a lot of the times working there. Like, working with the children was tough, and they, you know, push buttons, and, you know, they're going through a lot of pain, so it's intense. But there was also a lot of levity, and there was a family-type environment. But for me, that environment, I didn't know it at the time, was about triggering some mom stuff, because the director was a mom-type figure for me, very, uh professional and confident and that kind of thing, but emotionally unstable in a different way than my mom, but in a still way that would trigger stuff for me. And, and this director, I never witnessed these things, but from people I trusted, once she once stuck a dirty sock in a kid's mouth to get him to stop screaming, and picked a kid up by his neck outside of a church and so this was towards the end when I'd realized there was dysfunction but at first it was fine and I got promoted to a manager and uh, I was getting burnt out on direct contact with the kids so I wanted to do more behind the scenes stuff but it was uncomfortable because I wasn't ready to leave and they weren't ready to fire me and so I just tried to lay low and get the other staff members to uh, do the more direct contact stuff while I was protecting my energy and figuring out my next move. Towards the end of it, I decided to go back to uh, grad school. And it was a counselor that I met there who suggested I go directly to grad school. I hadn't had any psychology courses, so I thought I should go to community college. I had had my bachelor's degree, but no psychology. But he said, just apply. And I also took like three classes at ASU's counseling program as a non-degree student to help my chances and to also get some credits under my belt. So that was intense semester working 40 hours a week and taking three graduate courses. I was pretty much busy all the time. And I think I got all 4.0s as well because I just really wanted to get into that program and impress them. My girlfriend at the time, who I had mentioned before that I had been cheating on, uh, she was going back to her school in Chicago, Art, Art Institute there, and so I had applied there and I actually was accepted to a Chicago counseling program. But when I got accepted to ASU, I decided to go there and at first considered a long distance relationship with her, but eventually we parted and that was tough for me. I was addicted to her in many ways and so started pairing her name with the word heroin when I'd think of her to, to part. And I read about psychological theories and some other existential stuff like Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl and was coming out of my depression when I went into the program full-fledged and met a lot of people that I think were in a similar developmental phase as me in terms of finding themselves and so so this first time I really had a sense of uh, peer group kind of vibe uh, for a long time for a very long time probably since college and so yeah so it was about four or five years since I had really had a group of people that I hung out with, and I started getting more confidence and just feeling more good about myself. And and uh, then I started dating pretty quickly into the program, the woman that would become my second wife. And I, I was trying to think if I left anything out that summer before that. Let's say I was pretty depressed for a long time. I was living with my cousin. And right as school started, she wanted me to start paying half of her mortgage, which I thought was a little much. And I appreciated she had let me live there for free, but I wasn't going to, since I wasn't going to have a stake in the home, I wasn't going to play that much for a little place. And I didn't like that she just left me a note letting me know about that. She was in a new relationship. I thought that might have tied into it. And that woman that she was seeing, like, wanted to hook up with me once when I went out to the club with her, and I just 
averted that, but, you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So I got booted and I found a place right away that day close to campus, which worked out much better because I would have had like a 45-50 minute commute. would have been horrible. And uh, started dating uh, the woman. Oh, I ended a summer relationship over the phone. It was horribly just, you know, I thought I was doing a nice thing, but we weren't really committed. It was just a thing. But I thought it would be good for me to touch base before going out with someone else, but I didn't get a hold of her directly, let her know in a message that there was someone else I met, and that was that. And um, this woman that I started seeing, after we'd been going out a couple months or so, we found out that we both knew, of course, right away that we were both from Michigan, even though we met in Arizona. But our dads knew each other, in fact, both our parents knew each other when she was a fetus, I believe, and I was like one or two, and they came over to play bridge. And then my dad tried to sell some Amway products. <laughs> like a, a very insensitive kind of move there. And so her family decided to distance. And she had misrepresented her GPA. She wasn't accepted into the program. She was taking classes there, hoping she would be. So, for the first four months or so, I was uh, falling deeply in love, and she had lied about her GPA. She was embarrassed. So I thought all the time she would get in no problem. She had lots of you know, practice experience, and um, not just practice, but she understood psychology, and she had worked with different clients who'd been assaulted and that kind of thing back in Michigan. So I really thought she'd get in, but she didn't. And by that time I was hooked. And so what unfolded after that was that she decided that she was going to go to a second school in West Virginia, West Virginia University. And we were going to be in a long distance relationship, but during the time, a long time passed before she went there, and she just wasn't going to connect with the people that had been our mutual friends. She thought it would be harder to leave if she connected with them. So I'd connect with them and she'd avoid them and try to protect herself. And uh, During that time that she went back to West Virginia before I moved out there to do my internship in Pittsburgh, which was nearby, um, we lived out there together. I had affairs with two or three women, I can't remember exactly, and I thought that I was purging my shadow, but I wasn't. I was just fueling it. <laughs> I was listening to Nine Inch Nails, The Downward Spiral quite a bit, and uh, just really going into my darkness and stuff, but I thought I could get all this evil out of me and, uh, eh, and just be done with it, but I didn't. So I moved out there, it was dysfunctional. I had a crush on, I was an intern at a women's college, which for a person like me who had had a lot of cheating, it was not probably, you know, it worked out in the long term, but in terms of supporting a monogamous relationship with my second wife, who also, after we were married, said she didn't want to uh, be intimate, and again, I was like, I'm not ready to be done with intimacy. <laughs> what is my karma? What? What have I done in a past life? Was I assaulted? Did I assault? I don't know. So I talked to the student about, you know, getting to know her better and so forth, and she was seeing somebody, and she was attracted to me too, but blah, 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 it didn't really go anywhere. But I talked to my wife about wanting to have an open relationship, and she cried a lot, and she agreed to it, and then her mom said, if you stay with that, man, I will never talk to you again, and she decided not to, which was good, because our relationship was sick and just non-nurturing. She had a very violent dad that she grew up with, and uh, she had a lot of unresolved anger that got played out between us, and it was yucky. So I left, and I drove back to Arizona to resume my life and to try to get a career in the realm of counseling because I had completed my internship, made some money from it because I worked for a great guy who uh, was able to get me some 
some income from that gig, even though it was an unpaid internship at first. He was able to help me get like four thousand dollars or something for <laughs> doing some work there, which was great. And so I moved back to Arizona to start my career as a counselor, and that's where I'll pick up next time. Thanks.